Proteins are the most important molecules in our body and that is why they're called proteins. It means of first importance. Um, obviously, DNA is the code that makes proteins, but proteins are the molecules that are both our structure and our meta metabolism, the drivers of the chemical reactions in our body. And this little graphic here outlines many different ways in which proteins help. And some of them you'll have heard of. So if we start over here on, um, on the left, we've got proteins in the immune system, so things like antibodies, and then we've got um, other proteins in the immune system like complement system, which um, helps to burst bacteria when the antibodies join them. There are other um, proteins here involved in defense. We've got fibrinogen, which clots our blood. Um, we've got proteins that are structural proteins that actually make the um, shape of our cells and the um, hair and skin it makes the shape of our nose or our ears so we've got things like inside our cells the cyto the cytoskeleton you'll you'll remember that because that's um, what pulls chromosomes apart um, during metaphase and anaphase it lines them up the spindle fibers are part of the cytoskeleton and then you you probably have heard of keratin that's found in your hair and your nails collagen um, we use that, well, we don't, some people use it to, to puff up their lips, but it's what holds um, our bones structure being slightly malleable as well as our ears and the end of our nose. And elastin is what disappears when you start to have wrinkles. Um, you remember from module one enzymes, digestive enzymes, breaking down food, that's a metabolic use of proteins, um, signaling molecules, um, and hormones as well. There's a couple of hormones that are um, protein based like insulin um, and um, oxytocin, uh, which is the hormone we met um, that triggers labor. Um, and there are proteins in our muscle. Those are the ones you're probably aware of eating. So you eat actin and myosin and myoglobin, and that's a storage molecule. We've got some transport molecules like hemoglobin. There's hemoglobin over here in the blood, transporting oxygen around. So our proteins in our body are so important. So it's, it's important that we um, understand how they are formed into the shapes that allow them to do their job. And there are four levels of structure. So we start off with the primary structure, which is where we take each individual amino acid and join it to the next. So our primary structure is made of um, a chain of amino acids, one after the other, joined um, together by peptide bonds. So the peptide bonds are um, these bits in between each amino acid. And so there are lots of different amino acids. There's about 20 different amino acids, and there's a few of them named here. And the amino acids are coded for by the sequence of bases in the DNA. So the first thing when we're building a protein is to get the chain of amino acids. And then the next thing we do to that chain is to twist it and fold it. And when we twist and fold, we get its secondary structure. And there are two types of secondary structure, the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. You can see the alpha helix is a twisted spiral and the beta pleated sheet is layers folded back on one another, just like when you're folding the washing um, and you layer things on top of each other. And those are the two underlying structures that build up the first part of our 3D protein structure. And these structures are stabilized and held in place by fairly weak bonds, but there's quite a lot of them. So added together, they are quite strong and they're called hydrogen bonds. And they form between the core of the amino acid, the kind of backbone of the amino acid. Now you've got up, we've got our single chain of amino acids that we've now twisted or folded and now we combine those twists and folds into our tertiary structure our third level of structure and in this third level that i've got a picture of here i've just got 
um, alpha helix, but it does sort of fold on itself here into a bit of a beta pleated sheet. Um, but you'll notice that we have to stabilize this too, otherwise it would fall apart. And there are four main types of bond that are used to stabilize it. We had disulfide bridges. So this is between the side chains of the amino acid. If the side chain has sulfur in it, then it can form a bond with another side chain with a sulfur in it. And that's a very strong bond. It's a covalent bond, it's hard to break. And actually people with curly hair, they've got a lot of disulfide bridges stabilizing the keratin in their hair. There's also over here hydrophobic interactions. You can see the side chain on the amino acid has a large hydrocarbon molecule and it interacts with other water hating molecules and they form a hydrophobic interaction. They usually stabilize the center of the tertiary structure. And then over here on the right, we have an ionic bond. This is a um, electrostatic attraction between a positively charged side chain on an amino acid and a negatively charged side chain on another amino acid somewhere else in the protein. And this is quite a strong attraction, an attraction between a positive and a negative. They want to be together, so they will stabilize the um, tertiary structure quite well. The last type is um, what's called a dipole di dipole attraction. This is a little bit weaker than the positive and negative, but it, these all these interactions work together to stabilize the tertiary structure. And some for some proteins, um, that's it. That's all they have. But there are there are many proteins in our body that have the fourth order of structure, which is called quaternary structure. And the quaternary structure, what we do is we take multiple subunits and put them together. So we have multiple polypeptide chains or, and sometimes and, a non-protein group. So um, in the diagram here, it's labeled as a prosthetic group. And that might be something like heme, Heme is in the middle of each subunit of hemoglobin um, and it has iron in the center. So that's a non-protein part. You might have a glycoprotein like we met when we were looking at cell membranes. They have a non-protein group which is made up of carbohydrates. So anything that has either multiple subunits or has a non-protein bit as part of its structural component, that will be a quaternary structure protein. So let's have a look at some, a little bit, a little bit more detail here. So we've met that idea of DNA um, is converted into mRNA, which makes a polypeptide. But I've also got another line here with that one missing. So what we're looking at here is DNA makes RNA makes a protein. If it's a functional protein straight away, just like this protein here, which is albumin, albumin is just made from one subunit. So that is the functional protein. You'll notice here, just as a side note, albumin is full of alpha helixes. You can see all the little coils in it. Now, sometimes we have DNA, which is turned into mRNA, and it makes more than one polypeptide subunit. So those two subunits added together will give us a protein that's functional. And my example for this one is here, an antibody. We have dark green subunits and we have light green subunits. And you add those all together to get a functional antibody protein and it needs all its subunits to do its job. And down the bottom here, DNA turned into mRNA, turned into polypeptides, plus the addition of a non-protein group. And that's what you would need to get a fully functional protein. And down the bottom in the pinks and browns, we've got a picture of hemoglobin. So we've got four different subunits and each subunit at the very center has an iron ion as part of a heme group. So lots of different levels of how to get functional proteins, but all coded for by DNA.